We've had some messages from viewers. They're worried. Why is the periodic table changing again? Most people can understand when you get an element with a new name, like Copernicium this year. But these numbers, which have been here for ages under the different elements, the so-called atomic weight, how can that change? And suddenly they read a new story. IUPAC, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, has changed them. It's nothing sacred. Why can they change these things? Well, the answer is they haven't really changed them. But what these numbers are, are the so-called atomic weights, which are the weights of the average weight of the different isotopes of the elements. Isotopes are atoms that have different weights. Most elements have more than one sort of atom, which are chemically the same. We've told you about hydrogen and deuterium. These are just the same. Lots of elements have more than one isotope. Carbon has two, carbon-12, carbon-13, and a radioactive one, carbon-14, the one that was used to date the Turin Shroud. So what have they changed? What they've changed are these weights which refer to the average of the weights of the different isotopes of the elements. What IUPAC has recognised is the fact that different samples of elements from different places around the world, whether it's sulphur from a volcano or sulphate from a mine somewhere in England, have slightly different isotopic compositions and therefore they have slightly different atomic weights. Up till now, all scientists have been trying to fit the same atomic weight to sulphur from everywhere, and they've gone to all sorts of snags. Now what has been decided is there's a range of values. Sulphur on the Earth can have an average weight from this amount to that one. For example, here with boron, instead of being 10.811, it can be from 10.806 to 10.821. And they've changed the things for 10 elements. This is just a minor adjustment and it'll make it so much easier for chemists to work. I've no idea why they've done it now. I think it's probably because there's been some careful work done by the US Geological Survey. They've published their results in this paper, who've actually worked out what are the acceptable values for this range for the elements. And IUPAC has adopted it. The question is, should you throw away your periodic table? The answer is, if it's on a mug like my tea mug, throw it away because it's disposable anyway. But if you've got a nice one like this one here on the office wall, keep it because the difference is very small and it's not going to affect your daily life as a chemist. So why would, for example, sulphur from Volcano A be different from sulphur from Crystal B? Why, why is sulphur not cons a consistent blend of the isotopes? Well, when you have isotopes, because of their different mass, it gives chemical bonds a very slightly different strength. And if you start having different strength chemical bonds, the molecules react at different rates. So if you have a whole series of reactions that are producing hydrogen sulfide or natural elemental sulfur, there will be different reactions, the different isotopes will have different rates, and so they'll wind up in different ratios. Of course, the overall ratio in the universe will be fixed. It's just it will be slightly different in one place and another. It doesn't apply to chemists like me, but it will be important to people, for example, who are studying geology, looking at the elemental composition of rocks, where there, over millions of years there has been some change in the ratio. For most chemists, they probably won't bother very much at all because if you want to measure the mass of atoms or molecules very accurately, you will use a mass spectrometer which will me measure the mass of the individual isotopes. And then the average atomic weight doesn't really matter very much at all. So it's something that's interesting, it's fun, makes you think about chemistry again, but it's not something that's going to change our lives enormously.